Six months have already passed since the guys started living as ghosts in the city. The girls admired the small sprouts. They rejoiced at them, and the guy collected fruits. People often say that home is where the heart is, the children's days passed serenely, they thought that perhaps life in this place was even better than in the royal capital. However, this was the case before, and now. It was like hell on earth. People worked tirelessly. One of the workers fell to the ground. The second worker ran up to him and asked the people standing around him to get into the water. He asked to give him at least a little rest. The guard approached him. They did nothing, just stood and watched the workers' requests. The fat man said that non-humans must give their all. The fat man said that non-humans are slaves and working to death for humanity is all that is not good for. This was said by Gapoli Grid, the head of the Grid House. He also added that human superiority is the teaching of Baba humanism, highly valued by the royal capital. There were four houses that comprised the House of Lords of the Royal Capital, known as the Supreme Four. Grid's house is considered the most powerful among them. He was granted vast lands next to the Royal House of Barham. They were nobles among nobles. Gapoli ordered the non-humans to work. The guards beat them, and they couldn't do anything about it. Suddenly Gapoli was called by his son. He angrily opened the doors. He was up to something. The servants bowed before him. Gapoli said that they had not seen each other for a long time. He asked if he understood correctly that he was tired of working at the academy like some poor man. If the guy changed his mind, then the father said that he could, out of leniency, offer a couple of plots of land. Thafat shouted that he had not come to his father to discuss such things. He couldn't believe that his father sat in luxury while his people suffered from the hard work and taxes they were subjected to. Gapoli said that they were just like the other houses. The guy asked not to talk nonsense because if everything continues, they will all die of hunger. He asked for this terrible situation to be corrected. Gapoli furiously placed the glass of wine on the table. And he yelled asking how the hell a fugitive like Safat could know about the nobility, let alone running the state, he says that all his deeds are righteous, and a child who is not able to obey his orders is not his child, so he said that he would abdicate from Safat. Safat was pushed out of the castle gates. The guy turned around, and he asked to be listened to again, because non-humans can, but without listening to him, Gapoli refused all offers. The guard said that by the decree of Lord Gapoli, the guy would be prohibited from setting foot in the royal capital for life. They started chasing him away. The guy realized that he was screwed. Now that his ex-father's mercenaries had banned him from entering the city, the boy would not be able to return to the academy or his dorm, and he had no money. He realizes that if only he could contact the director, then maybe. But without finishing his thought, the guy heard that someone called him. It was Eldina. She said she heard he was kicked out of the family home, so she rushed over. Safat couldn't believe that the girl had come a long way because she was worried about him. Eldina was his colleague and one of his few friends. The guy realizes that Eldina can keep her job as an academy teacher even at the royal school, where racism towards non-humans is widespread because she is a special case and is granted additional privileges due to her excellent magical features. Safat met a girl at an academy known for accepting anyone with talent. After graduating, they both sought to find a job at the academy. Eldina said the guy was fired, he couldn't believe it. Now that the girl told him about this, he realized that Gapoli's influence extends even to the academy. He thought that he had already taken advantage of it. Aldina said the director wanted to convey that he was sorry. Safat was glad that the girl was so kind. People passing by said that Eldana was a hot thing. Safat looked at them sideways. People continued to discuss the girl, but one said that she was not human, so they did not need her. They told him that everything was fine, since she was not a human, she could be bought cheaply. Safat put a hood on her, and he hugged her, thus protecting her. The girl apologized, and she said everything was fine. Aldina asked the young man what he would do now. She wanted to offer him something if he didn't mind. 
The girl said that there is a border town that is quite far from Gapoli's house. It is called Green Covent. Her parents are part of the group that runs it. Safat is surprised that non-humans can rule the land, but he understands that if this is part of the parliamentary program, then everything could work. Aldina says that if they go there, the guy could get a teaching job based on her recommendation. Safat didn't even ask, but Eldina offered him a plan, and so it happened, he went in search of Green Covent. The guys went into the store. Eldina noticed that Saft did not have normal clothes. That's why I bought him a raincoat. The carriage has arrived. Safat apologized for relying on the girl a lot, but Eldina said it was okay, the guy understands that he will need to earn money when he gets to the city to pay the girl. The guys began their journey, the royal capital disappeared into the distance. The guy was sitting in the carriage. He thought about Green Covent, it was a border town ruled by humans and non-humans, he assumed everyone there lived in harmony. Safat was already thinking about living there with Eldina and starting a family. But this was impossible because Eldina worked at the academy of the royal capital and besides, Safat was completely out of her league. They continued driving. The guys stopped to eat. Then we drove again. The tenth day had already begun since they left for Green Covent, and Safat was asked if he was Grid. Gapoli's mercenaries asked about this. The guy looked at them in bewilderment. The girl was also surprised. The guy couldn't believe that the guards were chasing him, he thought that the father wanted to kill his son. The guy realized that he could let Eldana escape, so he began to take out his wand. The mercenaries looked at him. Safat was ready for battle. The mercenaries took out their swords. However, some kind of non-human appeared. She killed the mercenary. The guys were surprised by this. Having prepared your hand, she killed the second and third. The mercenaries fell unconscious to the ground. The inhuman stopped to retract her claws. The guys looked at her with surprised glances. Suddenly, she jumped on Safat. She was very glad to see him unharmed. Safat recognized Anya. Safat asked why she was here. She said that she left her job at Grid's house to go with them. All because her only meowster is Safat, she asked to be allowed to be useful again. She said it would get better. After all, she brought his things, and with the money that she managed to earn, she bought useful supplies. Safat thanked the girl for this besides, she even had a carriage and a horse. Anya said that there was no need for thanks, the main thing was that she was able to help the young meowster. Aldina angrily asked what kind of relationship they were in. The guy and Anya were afraid of her. Anya managed to come up with something. He said that the young master wasted no time and had already found his future bride. Safat was confused and said that he and Eldina were only friends, rather even colleagues. He tried to explain himself. Anya apologized to the lady and said that Safat had a lump instead of a head. Eldina said that everything was fine. Meanwhile, the mercenaries had already begun to come to their senses. Anya jumped into the cart and said that it was time to leave before it was too late. They were driving at high speed. The guys were in a hurry. Meanwhile, to the cart. Safat and Eldina were discussing the map. The guy thought that even if they ran, they only had one road and there was a high probability that the mercenaries' horses would catch up with them sooner or later. He believed there had to be something. Suddenly, the guy saw something on the map. He told Anya to turn onto the old forgotten road. The guy suggested that perhaps this road still leads all the way to Green Covent. Anya listened to the guy. They drove towards an abandoned road. The guys took turns driving the horses. Some were resting, while others were looking for the road and driving the cart. It was raining. It intensified. Two days have passed. Anya said that it looked like they had lost control of their pursuers, Safat suggested setting up camp, Eldina agreed to this, and besides, the horses also needed to rest. The guys lit a fire. Anya ran out of the cart and said that Safat's shift was over. He went to rest. They slept without their hind legs for what seemed like the first time in forever. Safat told Eldina that at this rate they would reach the Green Covent in just three days, that is, if the rest of the road still existed. 
Anya said that if this calms them down, then everything is fine with the roads because she sees traces of people passing nearby. After that, the guys constantly had rest stops. Safat said that he had the best marks in archery and still he could not hit. Eldina said that in practice it was different. Anya said that the hunting could be left to her. She was able to get a few rabbits. Along the way, they were going to borrow a stable in the ruins of the old city. Eldina said that in the canyon they could all sleep together. Anya said that in this place they could rest well if they tidied up. Six days passed, Anya said that her paws hurt, Safat was happy, and Eldina said that she would arrange for Anya to sleep at her parents' house. They arrived at the border town of Green Covent. The guys were surprised that they couldn't get through. The consultant asked if the guy's name was Safat, and he added that they had an order from the royal capital prohibiting Safat from entering the border city. The guys were very surprised. Aldina asks what this means, the consultant says that he cannot let them in even at the girl's request, because the order was given from the Lord's chamber. Safat realized that the mercenaries they met were sent to send out orders. Aldina says that she will not be stopped by a man of his rank, so she asked to bring the commanding officer, and if he refuses, she is going to file a complaint with Grid's house. Safat told Eldina not to worry about him because he was fine. The guy understood that if the rulers of the lands went against Gapoli, then Eldina's parents would not be left alone. Safat thanked the girl for her help, but Eldina tells the guy to wait because she can come to an agreement with her parents. The guy shouted that if the girl goes against the government, she will have the same problems. Suddenly, someone said that at first she didn't understand who was screaming, and then she realized that it was Safat. The guy recognized Kiro. She asked what he was doing in the border city. Kiro said that he was working, but he also wanted to know what Safat was doing in this city. Kiro listened to them and understood the situation. He was surprised that the guys had come a long way to find out that they could not enter not only the border city, but all cities. He realized that everything was bad for them. Safat understands that his father does not like people who contradict him, and most likely he will not be able to appear not only in cities, but also in villages that they will meet along the way. Kiro asked for time to think. He assumed that Gapoli wanted to say that Safat would not be able to live where people live. He asked the guys if they had come across any abandoned villages or towns along the way, or if they had come across any places where they could stop along the way. It dawned on Safat. He remembered the old city because it completely fit the description. He turned to Kiro. Kiro listened to his proposal. He allowed them to take the necessary supplies before leaving. Fafat apologized because he didn't have money with him, but the guys said that they didn't need it at all and he shouldn't pay a single coin. Kiro asked if Safat really didn't remember the moment when he gave the medicine for free and the current help can be considered payment for a service. But Safat said that it was just a medicine and he didn't even need reagents to create it. But Kiro said that you don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Safat noticed that when he gets into trouble, non-humans always help him. Aldina found out that he had lost his job, so she told him about her hometown and went on a long journey with him. And Anya even spent her hard-earned money to help. He didn't know how he could repay the help of these wonderful people. He hoped that he could become a person who could help the same way they helped him. The guy turned to Aldina. And he said that someday he and she would one day. There will definitely be evens, and with Anya too, he promised. Safat recalls that before the House of Lords Academy was not so bad towards non-humans, his father did not want to pay tuition, so when Safat entered school, it was like running away from home and earning tuition while studying was often difficult. The students of the Academy did not expect to see the second son of the grid house. They did not understand why a guy from a noble family entered the Academy. Some suggested that it was as a hobby. The students of the Academy were also surprised at Eldine because she was the first elf they met who went to study at the Human Academy. During Eldina and Safat's classes, they became close friends, and together they chose the path of becoming a teacher. Safat recalls that the days spent with her in the royal capital were very fun. He thanked the girl for what she did for him. 
Kiro said that it seemed like they were ready to hit the road again. He said goodbye to the guys and asked Safat if they would have a drink when things calmed down. So the guys went to the destroyed city, they hoped that the threads of Gapoli's power did not reach the city. Finally they arrived. Getting out of the cart, they headed towards the building. The guys walked up the stairs towards him. They entered it. There was a lot of dust there. It was clear that no one cared for this building like all the others. Safat asked Unya how about staying in this building, the girl said that this was a good option if it was tidied up. The guys were on the first floor, the living room and dining room were one room, the bathroom and toilet needed renovation. On the second floor, there was a living room and six more rooms. Anya noticed that there was something else upstairs. The guy looked and saw a staircase leading up. He was amazed by this. When they reached the top, a beautiful landscape opened up to them. The guys were surprised and happy. The whole story is a man's diary. Who lost everything but decided to build everything again, God knows how it will all end. That diary would be the history of a place that anyone could call home. Morning came, the guy went to the stable. He wished good morning to Eldine. She stood up and also wished him good morning. Safat was shocked. Eldina looked at herself and realized that she was without clothes. The girl quickly took cover and Safat apologized. After being refused a green hollow, the guys arrived in an abandoned village and chose a wooden house to live in. Safat suggested that the first thing they do was put their basic life in order, and from that day their new life began. The guy said that first of all they need to clean the house. Entering the house, the guy saw a wagging tail. Anya was already doing all the cleaning. She greeted Safat. She said that it had become very clean, so it was already possible to bring things in. Safat asked if the girl slept well, she said that absolutely. Anya said that she would do everything possible to help the guys, she even managed to assign rooms to each of them. The guys were already setting up their rooms. Safat realized that thanks to Unja, they would no longer have to worry about a place to sleep. On the first floor, the guys set up water supply, but Anya said the water heater still doesn't work. She asked if Safat could fix it, he said he could, and besides, there was water if he could clean and replace the magic stone. Then most likely they can use the water heater, Anya said that in the meantime Eldina Sama will cook the food. Meanwhile, Anya will bring water. She asked Eldina to chop the vegetables. The girl picked up a knife for the first time. She was very worried. Safat was repairing a water heater, he was wondering where the magic stone should be for this type of water heater. Having found the magic stone, he saw that, as he had thought, the power of the old stone had dried up. Having arrived with water, Anya saw Eldon cutting vegetables and was shocked. Anya took charge of the cooking, and it turned out to be a magnificent feast. Eldina said that Anya's son prepared everything. And Eldina's food was completely ruined, Safat did not expect this. Everyone ate deliciously. At this time, the guys had a problem with provisions. And Kuro-san will deliver the next batch in a month, Onya said that they will manage somehow, because when they arrived, she was exploring the area. The guys went together to get some loot. They came to the field, Safat noticed that it was neglected, but it looked like there were wild vegetables left in it. The guy took out his magic wand and thought that its time had come. He pointed the stick at the vegetables, and he cast a spell. With the magic of the wind, he eliminated the weeds. Using earth magic, he plowed the field. Anya noticed that this was amazing, she said that the young Mr. Great Magician. But Safat said she was exaggerating too much. After all, in fact all the magic he uses is only entry level. At the academy he introduced a lecture course focused on pharmaceutical magic. His professor said that he could not find magic that was compatible with Safat. Anya said that she would have to somehow get the meat of the magical beast, and the food issue had been resolved. The girl entrusted the field to Safat and Eldana because they could use magic, and at this time she was going to get suitable furniture from other houses. The guys each started minding their own business. In addition to moving furniture, Anya also hunted animals. Safat and Eldina came to the house. 
the guy was surprised and the girl was happy. Anya has already arranged all the furniture. The guys prepared the bathroom so everyone could wash themselves. This was their first day of a new life, they no longer had problems with a place to live and food. In addition, they could bathe in warm water, Safat realized that they had not repaired the water heater in vain. Someone called him. It was Anya, she offered to swim together, she asked to rub her back. Safat was shocked that she didn't jump into the bathtub naked, he invited the girls to go first. Aldina kept thinking about Safat and Yuna, whether their relationship was too close. She was thoughtful. And Unya was glad to have a bath. Aldina asked Yuni what their relationship was like. She was waiting for an answer. Anya said that for her the young master's happiness comes first. She also added that Aldina Sama and Safate Sama are suitable for each other. With a smile, Unya asked to call her simply Unya. Everyone was happy. Unexpectedly, Anya said that she would be suitable as a mistress. Aldina was very surprised. The girls came out, Anya apologized to Safat for keeping her waiting, she explained this by saying that the bath was very good, Safat asked why Aldina was tired. Entering the water, the guy became interested in what the girls were talking about. He came out of the bathroom and heard Anya say that he should hold his hand like a cat. She looked at what she was doing. It turns out that Eldon was taught to hold a knife, Safat was glad that the girls became friends. Dinner was ready. So one month passed. The guys were harvesting. But Anya heard something. Horses galloped towards them. Anya shouted that someone was approaching them. The carts were traveling at great speed. There were a lot of carts, and in front of them was some kind of knight in armor. She said that the guys seemed to be doing well. It was Kuro, he was happy to see the guys. He was delighted that the guys managed to put the house in order in just a month. Kuro said that he brought them food and everything they needed, but realized that they didn't seem to need all this anymore. But Safat said that they still needed supplies, he also said that this time he had to pay for Kuro's services, but Kuro said that he did not need money, but Safat was against this, because he believed that it was wrong. Then Kuro offered to sell medicine. The guy thought about it. Eldina asked about medicinal herbs, the guy said that he had them, and the girl added that there was a place for them in the field. Safat recalled that he could not enter the city, he was thinking about trade. Kuro said that the guy is forbidden to be allowed into the city, but there is one place and this is the village. He said that he could introduce Safat to the residents. The guy liked it. Several days passed. The guys planted seeds. The sprouts began to sprout. Kuro promised to return in a month, he said that he would pick them up when the medicine was ready. Safat said that first they needed to prepare a workplace, he asked if a room on the first floor would be suitable, he also had equipment, Anya was able to bring some of his things. They arranged the room. Safat started making medicine. Finally, he finished everything. And a month later, Kuro was able to take them with him on a two-day cart ride to the northwest. While they were driving, a village was visible at the foot of Mount Goron, it was a village of semi-humans. Safat noticed that she was quite prosperous. The guys looked at the houses. The guy noticed that there were no people in it at all. Suddenly, someone shouted that there was no need to come closer. A stranger was walking towards them. He moved his sword forward and said that they should leave the race of people because they do not want to die. The guys were puzzled. A stranger stood in front of the guys. He was targeting them with hostility. Suddenly Anya turned around. She cut her attacker's hand. And she grabbed him by the throat. His sword flew away. She said if the stranger harmed the young master, she would kill him. The attacker realized that she was not an ordinary cat girl. He knew that if this continued, she would kill him. He waved Yuni off. Safat said that he turned into a magical beast. He had heard that many of the demi-human race were capable of transforming into monsters, and what was in front of them was the appearance of a magical beast. The beast said that she did not know why the guys came to his village, but demanded that he leave immediately, and he would turn a blind eye to their appearance. Anya looked at him intently. 
she asked if, with such a transformation into a magical beast, he really intended to defeat her. But suddenly Kiro stood between them. He asked them to stop and told the monster that the guys were his guests, the monster realized that it was Kiro, he thought, and she said that she understood. And he turned into a man. He was a guard in the village at the foot of Mount Goran Gugs, he was a man-dog, he said that he was guilty because for a number of reasons he was losing his temper. Kuro says that the state of the village is strange and asks what happened. Gugs said that they had an epidemic. He added that all the sick are now in the church and everyone is afraid to go out. And the station soldiers from the capital were the first to flee, so he doesn't like the human race. He turned to Safat to quickly leave, but unexpectedly Gugs was called. The animals shouted that something bad had happened and Yom fell. Gugs was shocked. Kuro tried to calm Gugs down and asked who Yom was, the guard said with concern that she was her only sister, which can mix medicinal plants, Gusk worriedly and energetically asked if Kuro had medicine, Safat said that she did. He raised his hand. And she said that he just wanted to trade in the village if possible, so he brought with him a decent amount of medicine. Guggs was surprised at first. However, then he angrily asked what the guy wanted to do. He looked at Safat angrily, but the demihuman standing behind him reminded him that he needed to hurry. Guggs said she would take them to the church. They came to the church. There were a lot of sick people in the church. Aldina said there are an awful lot of sick people. Gugs led the boys to Yom. Tilsoria Yom was a teaching sister, Gugs said she was in charge of the church. Safat approached her and asked to be allowed to examine her. He felt intense heat and red spots on his neck. The guy said that the true nature of the epidemic disease is Depay fever. Eldina also thought so. Safat said that if it is the Depay bacterium, then he can make medicine from what he brought. He asked Unya and Kuro to make as much ice water as possible, he also added that it was a droplet infection, so they would need to drink medicine afterwards. However, for Safat, the appearance of the disease was strange. He had never heard of a massive outbreak of Depay fever, he thought that it could be some kind of source. But the guy decided that treatment comes first, and investigation later, Safat said that he and Eldina would give medicine and also use healing magic. Yom apologized. She thanked her for her concern, but said that she did not have the money to pay. Safat said that money was not needed because now there was an emergency, so he asked to accept forgiveness. He whispered to Eldine, asking if he was doing everything right. The girl said that if Safat decided so, then everything was right. Yom looked at the medicines. Suddenly, Safat felt a dark aura. He heard the discontent and suspicions of the demihumans about Safat. Eldina asked everyone to calm down. She said that Safat is indeed from the human race, but he is a good person. Safat noticed something. When he is in church, the sick begin to worry. The guy told Eldine that he would entrust the care of the sick to her for a while. He wanted to find out the source of the Depay fever infection, because it would happen again if the source was not destroyed. Safat went to Guggs and told him that I would like to find out something. Guggs began to listen to him. They left the village. They walked through the forest. Guggs says five days ago. In the place where he high Safat, the corpses were burned and buried. Someone threw a large number of rotten corpses of Delaware boars in this place. The guys stood in front of a high slide. Gug says that the first people to get sick were those who processed the corpses. Safat realized that the bacteria had multiplied inside the rotten meat, and there is no doubt that the corpses are a source of infection. He asks who in the world needed so many corpses. Gugs didn't know. However, before that day, there were undoubtedly no corpses. Guggs noticed that today was a good day. He understood that someone had deliberately placed rotten things in this place, placed them near the village. The corpses were thrown out by someone. He angrily said that Safat was trying to feed the victims of this village expensive medicine to cure his common disease. He called him trash and asked if that was true. Guggs had already begun to take out his dagger. Safat, apparently not understanding what Guggs was talking about, 
said that he could not imagine that such a person exists. However, Guggs said that it was about him. Suddenly, they heard someone step in the bushes behind the tree. They looked intently at that place. A man came out from behind a tree asking for help. It was a child from an unknown village. The guys noticed her horns, they thought if this was a girl from the half-human race. Safat saw one like this for the first time, Guggs had never seen one like this, he didn't understand where it came from, he said that this was a dangerous place for a child. The girl fell. The guys ran up to her, Safat said that she had lost a lot of blood, he was going to use healing magic. The girl felt bad. Safat cast a spell, and the healing began. The girl asked to help her sister. Guggs followed her. The girl had a high fever. Guggs asked Safat if everything would be okay with them because he was a small child. Safat noticed that the child had a high fever and red spots, he realized that the child also had to pay fever. Guggs said that they needed to go to the church quickly, but Safat said that there was no room there so they would treat in the cave, he asked Guggs if he knew what kind of semi-humans they were. He said he didn't know, but they looked like ogres. The only medicine that Safat had at hand was a general antipyretic. He decided that he would give the antipyretic, with the help of healing magic, an antibiotic and bactericidal effect. He understood that depot fever is a serious disease that leads to death due to intense fever, and if the medicine does not help, life will be in danger. He mixed the right medicine. And he gave it to the girl to drink, Guggs was very worried. The red spots began to disappear. The medicine worked. Guggs asked if it worked, if the girls were saved, Safat said that the elimination of the depot bacteria was successful. Guggs was glad that the girls were healed, but Safat said that they were not yet. Due to the fact that they are weakened, he must continue the healing until they regain consciousness, Guggs asked if he was really here all the time. He asked how he could help, Safat said that the treatment might take the whole day, so he asked to inform Eldon and Yuna about this. The girls were still unconscious. Safat took their hands, and he sat down next to them, hoping that they would get better soon. It's already getting dark. Night has come. Morning. Safat hoped that Guggs had returned. Suddenly he heard Anya, she said that she had finished work and arrived to him, Guggs shouted that she would tear off his ear. In addition, she added that Guggs was too dangerous and asked why he was so far away from her. But Guggs said that she was more dangerous than him. She angrily asked who pointed the sword at the young master. At the first meeting, Guggs hesitated. Fafat looked questioningly at Guggs. He closed his eyes. And he said that he was wrong. The girl whom Safat healed woke up. The guys were surprised. The girl asked who they were. And she saw that there was a man in front of her. And her sister, who was lying next to her, had not yet woken up. The girl was worried. The point without her hands climbed the bones. She turned into a monster and told the man to take his hands off his sister. The guys didn't expect to see her true identity. There was a sudden change in the girl. She turned into a dragon. Safat realized that she was from the human dragon race, the winged dragon family. Anya shouted to be left, and Guggs was to take the young master away. So he began to pull Safat out of the cave. The history of dragons began a long time ago. The dragon race moved to the magic world, but very few remained, and from the majority. Safat remembered that dragon bones and scales are now sold at high prices as rare material for weapons. Therefore, Safat asked not to hurt the dragon. The monster screamed. He spat several fireballs towards the guys. Uni's dress was set on fire. The guys realized that the affected area was corroded by poison. Safat remembered that he had read in a book that young dragons spit out caustic poison instead of flame. Suddenly he realized that the rotten corpses that suddenly appeared were probably not thrown away. Anya shouted that they were not enemies. Safat remembered how the girl came to them and asked to help her older sister. Perhaps that's when she received the wounds. The girls were attacked by large boars. The guy suggested that the older sister probably turned into a dragon for protection and fought with the Delover boars. 
Safat understands that many will be targeted if they know that there are rare dragons. He heard that by turning into a dragon, non-magical beasts, non-dragon slayers are not a threat. But these sisters are still young, so they live in hiding. Safat turned to Gugs. He said that he needed to get closer to talk, so he asked to cover him. The guys ran towards the dragon. Anya couldn't understand why they were doing this. The dragon has already begun to charge a new spit of poison. He spat at Safat, but Gugs managed to cut him down. His sword fell apart. Safat wasted no time and ran very close to the dragon. The dragon started yelling at the guy not to come, but he said he wanted to help them. Safat says that everything is fine with the elder sister, the wounds have also closed, and now nothing threatens her life, but recovery will take some time. It became quiet. The older sister's face lit up. The guys were waiting for the girl to return to her usual appearance. She couldn't believe that her older brother had helped. Therefore, I apologized because it was all sudden. But Safat says that everything is fine, he offered to take her sister to a safe place. The girl turned from a dragon into an ordinary person, the guy felt awkward. She apologized because the clothes she had were torn. Safat gave her a coat. Anya was again convinced that her master was a good person. Safat took his older sister in his arms, Gugs wanted to say that he was taking on the physical work. However, the girl glared at him. She stood between them, blocking his path to his sister. Gux said he understood everything and didn't really care. Aldina and Kiro stood on the street and drank antidotes so as not to get infected and saw Safat. Aldina ran to them and asked if they had found out what caused the infection. She could not believe that it was children. Safat said that they would talk about it another time. He believed that the incident with the source of the infection would not happen again, so everything is fine and there is no need to rush. He asked how the residents were being treated. The girl says that she uses healing magic, but the patients are stubborn and do not take the medicine. There were still many sick people. Safat has noticed that the number of patients is only increasing. Ildina says that symptoms are appearing in the families of patients and in nursing care. The guys approached Oma. She apologized because she wouldn't take the medicine. The half-humans still did not believe in help, they did not know what the human race would later demand for the medicine, some said that it was better to wait for other help. The guys were surprised by this. Gugs got angry. I took the medicine. And he said that he guarantees that the medicine is effective, if you don't like receiving it like that, then he will buy it. Leem said that this was impossible, but Gugs told her not to worry because he had savings for an emergency, he asked how much one piece cost. Safat asked how about this price and showed three fingers. He suggested that it was worth three or even thirty thousand. But he was told that he was wrong by two figures, Safat said that he was really wrong. Gugs was surprised and furious that the medicine costs three million. But Safat said that this is not so, and the medicine costs just 300. All the demihumans were very surprised. They couldn't believe that the medicine cost only 300. Yom said it was too cheap. Safat wanted to say that, judging by the cost, this is normal, but someone called him. Kuro said that if a half-human wants to get medicine, moreover, in their border settlement, it will cost a lot of money, and the human race has practically monopolized magical knowledge, and they have practically no opportunity to study, so the medicine that Safat brought is also saved him many times too. Safat told the story that long ago, his ex-father told him that magical pharmaceuticals are good, and he can benefit from this by selling expensive medicine to the rich. But the guy understood that studying was not for the sake of it. Emmy took the medicine. And she drank the contents with tears in her eyes. She said that it would help everyone and bowed. Safat did not want this, but he was glad that he studied magical pharmaceuticals. People did not believe that the medicine could be purchased at such a price. It was too little. Safat was told that he would receive a payment from the shopping quarter society. This was said by Araya, the treasurer from the Trade Quarter Society. She said that Kirosan asked for help, so she delivered the paperwork to issue the payment. Having said the benefit, the guys were surprised. 
Yom said that this is a big help for the church and they will be able to buy medicine without hesitation. Araya says that with Kuro's recommendation, as M said, the villagers also trust Gugsu. Gugs felt uncomfortable. Araya asked him to fill out a form first. The document was written about a settlement at the foot of the mountain. This confused the guy. Araya reassured him that in fact a village is a settlement. Safat decided that it would not be prudent for him to write his real name. Kuro said that he could write a suitable one. Then Safat decided to sign his old name, Ghostji. Yon said she is not receiving payments. Araya said the effect of her medications is barely noticeable. Anya said that she had finished distributing the medicines, and Eldina also finished distributing them. Araya thanked Ghostji. But the guy asked to call him simply Safat, because that's what his friends do, Araya said that the hotel was ready for the evening. The guy thought about it. He looked at the dragon girls. And he said that he had run out of medicine, so he would have to return home. In addition, he understood that he should not leave the children who caused the illness, and the older sister was still sleeping, and they needed a place where they could fully recover. He thought that the worries due to Depay fever were now resolved with the available medicines, and he also prepared a small supply. Araya told the guys to come again, when they have new medicines ready, they will be waiting for them. Safad apologized to the girls for the haste. But they considered that nothing bad had happened, and the situation was the situation. The guy explained to the two sisters that he could not leave them without attention, because they were from the dragon race and they could become the target of bad people. Safat was happy and thought that, despite the fact that they had stayed in the village for two days, they did not have enough time to spend the night. Residents said goodbye to the guys in unison. Guggs told Safat to come back, and then he would treat him to a good drink. Safat was surprised, and the girls smiled. Onya said it felt like they had a long-standing relationship with the village. Eldina laughed, and Safat hoped that would be the case. The boys began to have endless everyday worries. Morning came, the guys were already at home. One of the sisters just woke up. She didn't understand where she was. She remembers that she seemed to be fighting with magical beasts, and her sister got sick. She left the room into the corridor. She remembers that someone helped. And this someone was from the race of people. She saw her sister Ella talking to Safat. Therefore, not trusting people, she stood between them. The elder sister did not understand why everyone was smiling. Ella said her sister was wrong. The guys all gathered at the table and began to discuss what had happened. Ala was the older sister, she listened to the situation that happened, the girl realized that because of her corrosive poison, people in the village became infected. There was silence. Anja said that the young master and Eldina were going to go to the village while the sun was high. Safat confirmed, and you said that they were going to deliver more medicine to the village at the foot of the mountain, and it was time for them to leave. He introduced himself as all Safat and said that there was no one in the place where they were and the girl could calmly recover. The girl looked at the hand the guy was offering. And she introduced herself as Allah, Ella's older sister. She then bowed and said that even though they were being helped, she apologized for being rude. Aldina said if everything was settled, then they can leave. Anya said that the guy should leave them with her. Safat and Aldina set off. The girls saw them off, but it seems Anya is up to something. She said that the young master asked to make new clothes. She asked to thank the young master, Ella thanked him. Anya also said that the girls could use the free room until the wounds healed. Ala could not believe that they would live in such a beautiful room. She vaguely remembered, but certainly Safat came to help them. She felt his warm hand. But the girl drove away the loving thoughts, because she was an older sister, and she had to be strong. She promised this to her mother in heaven. Ella said that Safet Sama also made their beds. But Allah said that she understands well that he is a good person, but under no circumstances should they be told that they are dragon people. The little sister thought about it, the eldest could not believe that the secret had already been revealed. 
She swears that she said so many times that one should not turn into a magical beast because a person can be blinded by greed and he can change his beliefs, but Ella stood on the fact that Safate Sama is not such a person. She explained this by saying that even now and last time, he hurried to return home for the treatment of his elder sister. To make sure that there would also be no problems in the village at the foot of the mountain, he hurried to make the medicine again and went to deliver them. Everything proved that the guy was very good. Allah was surprised by this, she thought it was because of her, and because of such rudeness on her part. The girl closed her eyes. She decided that when Safat returned, she would apologize to him. Safat told Eldin that Mount Goran had appeared. Two days passed on the road to the village at the foot of the mountain. But just two days ago, Anya told Eldin that traveling together is a chance. She said that you need to push and push, apply constant pressure. Eldina said that she would try. But on the road she thought that everything was not like that at all. After all, in the end she didn't do anything, she couldn't even take a bath during the carriage ride, she hoped she didn't smell. The guys have already arrived in the city. Guggs was happy about Safat. Safat asked how the patients were after Depa fever. Guggs said that they were all completely healed and returned to normal life, he suggested looking at the village. The guys continued down the streets. Everyone recognized the guy and greeted him. He was thanked for his concern the other day. And they also cried because thanks to his help, many people survived. One of the farmers said that he works in the field, so if the guy wants, he can take a few seedlings and plant them. Another worker also gave something. The guy recalled how no one trusted him in the church. But now he was surrounded by half-people with joyful faces. Eldon was happy with Safate's success. The man came up to her and wanted to say that when she treated him, he liked her, but he was stopped because the partner had already been decided. The guys came to church. Yom was very happy to see them. She was surprised that they arrived so quickly, she could not believe that the new medicines were already ready, and they delivered them, the girl thanked them for this. Safat noticed that she had completely recovered, the girl said that it was only thanks to them. She considered that Safate and Eldina were husband and wife, and they became the saviors of the village. The guys were surprised Eldina blushed, she was embarrassed to hear that they were spouses, because they weren't even dating yet. She wondered what Safate was doing at that moment. He was also shocked and denied that they were not husband and wife. But the girl knew that he would say that. She knew that Safada had a thick skin for romance. Eldine felt sorry that the guy did not confirm their romance. Safat looked at her. He asked if she had said something now, but the girl said that she had not said anything. Me asked them if they had decided where they would spend the night today and suggested that they spend the night in the church, this would be a small thank you for their help. The guys looked at the room. There was a double bed. Safat was about to ask me to change the room. But the girl grabbed him by the cloak. And she said that she didn't mind sleeping with him. Besides, Meme had specially prepared this room and the guy should be polite. Meanwhile, in the church, Guggs joyfully greeted M and said that he invited Safat to drink. The girl says that this cannot be done because it is rude. The guys had already gone to bed. They lay facing away from each other. Eldina understood that they were old enough, but she did not understand how best to start at this moment because she had absolutely no love experience. But she told herself that she couldn't back down, so she decided that she needed to follow the example of the uni. Press and apply constant pressure. The girl recalled how Anya easily entered the naked room to take a bath together. She looked at her chest. She decided that she should not rush and Safate should start first. Suddenly she heard him calling her, the girl blushed very red. He asked to listen to him. The girl decided that that day had finally come. But what happened was not what she expected. Safat said that he wanted to consult with Anya as well. He said that there were plenty of rooms in the wooden house. The girl was saddened and realized that their conversation was about home. She thought that this was not what they should be talking about now. She said that about those two, if the guy wants to do something, then it's worth doing. The guy thanked her for accepting his idea. 
The girl understood that Safat could not leave someone in trouble, so she decided to always be with him. As a result, nothing happened between the two during the night. Eldina considered Safat a fool. The guy looked at her. He came up and showed the box. He said that he was still thinking of giving the contents to Allah and Ellie. The girl said that he was right and it would be safer this way. He thanked the girl for supporting his ideas. Meanwhile, in the abandoned city, Ella's name is called. Allah went out to look for her and realized that no one really lived next to them. She knew that this was an old station town, and it seemed that the village had been abandoned because they had built a new road and everyone had moved into the city, but the village remained abandoned. The girl remembers Anya saying that the road from the capital is bad, but there are several shortcuts to arrive at the Green Hollow and it seems that Kuro sometimes uses them. Ala finally found Ella. She couldn't believe that she was lazy to help and asked what she was doing in such a place. Ella didn't expect to see her sister. She said that she was not doing anything. Ala asked if there was something there. Ella said that she doesn't feed anyone. Ala saw that someone was looking from behind the girl. She said that now there is no way for them to keep a pet parasite. The girl believed that they could no longer bother Safat. Ella asked to leave the animal. The older sister was confused. They looked at her with puppy dog eyes. Anya came to them. She had a pitchfork in her hands. Safat heard screams. They hurried and the guy asked what was going on. The girls held Anya and told her to stop and not eat the animal. He hid behind Safat. Allah and Ella asked the girl not to kill him, they said that they would take care of him properly, Anya was surprised that she had such a bad reputation, she said that she just wanted to scare him a little, to drive him away. Safat asked if there were any other problems, the girl said that both were good girls, they helped by working in the field and at home. They hugged the animal, and Safat and Anya were talking. Allah was called. It was Safat, he smiled. He said that in the village at the foot, everyone was cured of Depe fever and no one died. The girl was happy. The guy said that she was good for protecting her younger sister. He also said if they don't mind that they are looking at living with them. The girls were surprised. He handed them a box containing two rings. They were surprised by this. He said that the rings are enchanted with distortion magic if they choose to wear them, other people will perceive them as lizard people. And even living in the city, they will not attract attention, and besides, it is much safer than deep in the mountains. He put rings on their fingers. They sparkled. The girls looked at the rings in amazement. They said that their mother had died, and they thought that now they would always be alone. They agreed to become new family members. Safat said he was very happy that they were considered family. Anya asked what kind of misunderstanding this was, Allah was convinced that it was Safat, a wonderful person, and he is even popular among the cubs because he gets attached easily. She wanted to do everything possible to be useful to him. They all went home together. Previously there were ruins, now their family in the wooden house has increased to five and one animal, so it became a little more lively, this time the conclusion of the diary was good. It's morning. Safad woke up. He felt something on his stomach. He stood up and remembered that yesterday he fell asleep with the teddy bear. But when he saw what was lying on his stomach, he was shocked. It was a mysterious girl. He shouted to the whole house where they got the child from. Suddenly Anya entered the room and said that today was good weather for drying the futon. The guy turned around. The girl did not expect to see this. She was shocked. She did not understand when the master managed to make a child. She was panicking. She assumed that this child was Eldina's. Eldina, having just woken up, approached the room with morning weakness and asked what had happened. The girls looked at the little girl. The girl said that although she was a bear cub yesterday, she was not a magical beast, but from a race of demi-humans. Anya said that it's good that they didn't accidentally eat her. The girl was very scared of this, so Anya said that it was a joke. Aldina says they didn't notice that hunting was not prohibited in the area, and they were careless. 
Safat asked about the ban on hunting, Eldina says, in order to prevent accidents, hunting is prohibited in many territories of the demihuman race, for example, around the village at the foot of the mountain. Onya said that this means this child came from somewhere far away. The guy asked if she remembered where she came from, dad or mom, the girl said she didn't remember anything. She ran away from scary people and was always alone. They asked her what her name was, but she didn't know that either. She apologized. Ala says that last night she and Ella were coming up with a name for the bear cub, and they came up with Koraku. She suggested this name. The girl thought about it. Safat, Eldina, and Anya looked at her questioningly. The girl began to eat a lot. Safat says that she seems hungry and can eat as much as she wants. Ala showed the fruit and said that it was also very tasty. Koraku said that she really liked it. The girls were glad that she liked the name. Safat said that they received a lot of seedlings in addition to grain crops, so they would need to expand the field. Anya agreed with this. They saw how the girl had already eaten everything she had. Safat was shocked, and Anya said that if they didn't hurry, the supplies would run out sooner. The guy told Korok that she was safe and protected in the house. The girl said that she will forever remain with her husband Sama. The guy is surprised by this. Korok says that she had a delicious meal, so she loves Safat very much and marries him. The guy felt pressure from Eldina. Eldine, meanwhile, was trying to control herself because she was jealous because of some child. Safat suggested asking the half-human race about the case with this type of half-human, they would try to find out some information about Koraku's parents in the village at the foot of the mountain. Eldina said that they could also make medicine and bring it to the village, but someone asked them accept the request before departure. Safat looked down. It was Kuro. He apologized for coming without warning, but he had some urgent business to attend to, and he also noticed that there were more people in the house. He said he went to a city seven days southeast, and it seemed like the disease was spreading there. Ala got excited. Aldina told her that everything was fine, and she had nothing to do with it because it happened in the other direction. Kuro told Safar that he wanted him to prepare a specific medicine. The guy said that she might be able to do this, Kuro laughed, and said that it would help. The guy turned to Korok and asked him to wait so that in a week they could calmly go in search of their parents. A little later, Unya and the others, together with Kuro's team, expanded the field. Safat and Eldina began to manufacture a specific medicine. Suddenly Koraku burst into their office and asked to play with her. The guy wrote that this happened. Four days passed, Safat apologized to Aldina, they sat up all night. The girl said she was fine, she asked if the guy was okay, because he didn't go to bed at all. The preparation of the medicine was completed a little earlier than expected. Kiro apologized because it was necessary in a hurry. He said that he would receive payment as soon as he delivered it, so he asked me to wait. With that said, Kiro and his team left in a hurry. Safat said that they will also go in search of Koraku's parents. Aldina suggested taking a break first. The next morning came, Onya instructed her sisters to watch the house. They were glad to have such a responsible job and wished me a safe journey. Aldina was never able to wake up, and the guys went off in search. Koraku said she went with her husband. Onya leaned out from behind Safat and said that she was here too. Koraku said that she was scary. Anya assumed that she was playing a bad joke on her. They finally arrived at the foot of the mountain. Mi said that this time there was a lot of medicine again. She thanked them for that. Safat also thanked them for using their services. Araya said that it would be better for the child to go to the department and check there. Leem asked if they would stay overnight in the church this time. She asked who Unya and Koraku were related to him. One said his mistress, the other his fiancé. Then Leem asked whether to prepare the same room as last time. Safat was shocked. He said that he was a man and he would like to ask a friend for a room. Yom understood the situation and said that the other room was only a library. But Safat was happy about this too. Koraku did not expect such a turn of events. She wanted to sleep with her husband Sama, but not alone with Anya. 
Anya said that she would be patient, but to tell the truth, she also wants to sleep with the young master. She took the girl away and Safat was happy. He went to the library. The guy recalled that he and Anya grew up for a very long time, like brother and sister, but nevertheless. She became a charming woman. Lately he had noticed her saying that she was his mistress, he thought it was a joke. He also recalled the incident of the night with Eldina. He was very worried and in the end could not close his eyes. Safat decided to distract himself by reading books. He saw three volumes. This was the first time the guy had seen such writing. He opened the book. It was magical, but outwardly it looked like laws, and besides, he could not decipher it. Safat fell asleep. Time has passed. The book was still open. The guy realized that he fell asleep in the middle of reading. Looking at his leg, he saw Koroku. She wished him good morning, and he responded in kind. Unya also did not stand aside. She said that no matter how many times she returned the girl, she always went to the young master, but at least she made sure that she did not wake him up. The guy wondered if Anya slept at all. He said that everything was fine because she also enjoyed the master's sleeping face. The guys went to the society of the shopping district to the office. Araya wished good morning to Safat. She said that she had made inquiries about the bear cub's case, and it seemed that he was not from their village, but there were also small settlements scattered nearby, and it was possible that the child was from that area. Safat understood the situation, but he had no clues. He apologized to the girl, but she did not understand why he was apologizing, because she liked spending time with her husband Sama. Anya said that she felt just as good, but Koraku began to say that this was not so. Meanwhile, Safat asked Araya why they needed such a large amount of cargo. She said there was a harvest festival planned in the Green Hollow. Safat did not understand why it was only planned and not executed. The girl said that an epidemic that occurred in a neighboring city was spreading, so the holiday was being canceled. The guys were surprised. Araya says that they were going to open several shops also from the village at the foot of the mountain, but it seems like everything is in vain. Safat remembered Kiro's words, how he said that he went to a city seven days away to the southeast, and it seems that the disease is spreading there. He also remembered how Eldina reassured Allah, saying that it was not their fault at all, because it was in the other direction. The guy guessed that the Green Hollow was located southeast of their house and just this city, Aldina's hometown. The girl was looking at the photograph at that time. She saw herself joyful with her parents, but he believed that she did not care about the family that treated Safates so badly. She had fluctuating feelings for the two families. Meanwhile, in the capital, in the Central Administrative Center, the director of the Central Department of the Border Region was Fenelia. She looked at the papers and asked if these were all the applications for today, the employee said that this was all. The girl looked at the book that was under his arm. She asked what it was, the guy had already forgotten about her. He said it was from a village at the foot of the mountain. He said that the settlement at the foot of Mount Gorham, the size of a village, is called a settlement because there is no head from the human race. Fenelia asked what was good about that. The guy said that in this settlement there are only half-humans. The girl became serious. But the guy said in fear that Fanny Sama has the skill of the elf race, so she is different from other demi-humans. Fenelia said that he would stop talking and ask to leave the documents and return to the post. The guy apologized for disturbing him and left. The girl began to read the documents, they were dated two weeks ago, so she thought that they would be unreliable, but she was in trouble because of the principle of the supremacy of the human race of the teachings of Babrabam. The document was written about frontier work, the girl decided that this was a less worthy job for partners of demihumans. But suddenly she remembered something after reading about Mount Gorin. She began to remember that there was a woman's gate on the mountain. Meanwhile, Foldent was flying with Safat and thought that they had rushed past the house and were approaching Mount Goran, the guy was still asking about different magic, and Allah was circling around the area until Safat was put to rest. Safat found a spell, and I decided to create a wall. 
A huge wall rose in front of them. The wall appeared in an instant. This magic was amazing, Safat had mana. He asked Allah to come down to the wall. They landed. Safat noticed that the walls had amazing hardness, he asked if this was the material of the magical world, he suggested that if he succeeded in using this spell, buildings and fortresses would be built in an instant. The goddess apologized, she asked the boy to sit back on the dragon girl and fly a little further, but not towards the village. They flew. A wall formed behind them. Safat could not believe that she had moved, his mana was slowly depleting. The half-humans who walked in the forest were surprised by this phenomenon. The little sheep girl asked what it was, she couldn't believe that the huge wall was moving. Foldent explained that the wall created is mainly used as a shield to protect against attacks on the battlefield, so when the magician moves a certain distance, the wall begins to follow him. But at the same time, mana is also depleted. Safat felt this, and he began to feel dizzy. The girl says that the wall continues to consume a certain amount of the magician's power, the guy began to slide. He fell from the dragon, when the girl talked about not using magic for a long time, Allah became very worried. The wall began to disappear. And soon she completely disappeared. Guggs, who was in the village, did not understand what it was, like all the other people in the village, they wanted to inform the garrison about what had happened, but Guggs said that they shouldn't do this because they wouldn't do anything anyway. Araya and Smee ran out from behind the gate. Araya wanted to say what just happened, but Guggs said that they saw it and not to worry about it. Araya noticed that recently the relations of the garrison were especially cruel. The girl had already come to them once, saying that a lot of poachers had gotten divorced lately. But the garrison decided not to do anything, and said that there were no poachers among them. Goog said it almost sounded like a confession. Araya would be happy if they were given the right to self-government. She says they could organize an official security team themselves. Guggs says the decision is not given to a populated area until it is recognized as a village. Meanwhile, Allah turned into a human and watched over Safat while he was unconscious. He knew it would be difficult to return home in the middle of the night. Allah asked Foldent if she could use restoration magic. The girl apologized and said that she was only a thought form and could only use transformation magic of low quality and quantity. And if he forcibly uses magic, it will cease to exist. Allah was shocked and Safat thought that being in the state of an ordinary thought form was amazing. Foldent said that she would inform the elven girl that the boy would be late. Safat thanked her for this. He apologized to Allah, but she did not need an apology, because she was alone with Safat. Koroku cried that Safat had not returned yet. She cried and said that she was lonely. Anya asked the girl to calm down, she realized that the girl was the same type as Elden. Anya was sure that Safat became interested in a magic book on the way, Foldent said that this was the correct answer. She suddenly appeared at home. The girl said that Safat was now in the direction of Mount Goron, Koroku asked where she was because she wanted to go in search. Anya took the girl to the roof under the pretext that the mountain was visible there, and they could wait quietly. Eldina was wondering if they would be back in time for dinner, Ella asked if Eldina would cook because she wanted to help. Climbing onto the roof, Anya shows the girl Mount Goran. Suddenly, something sparkled behind the cliff. The girls looked at this. The village guards did not understand what it was. There was some kind of explosion. Ella shouted that the mountain was burning, Eldin did not understand what kind of flame it was. Anya realized that this flame was near Safat, so she decided to run to save him. Ella asked them to fly on her. Foldent was sure that this was the work of that Sonia. She remembers that while she was alive, she always slept in a bed at the foot of Mount Goran. Aldina shouted to Yuna to wait, because if they were to go, they would all go together. Foldent recalls that some fool unknowingly incurred wrath. The poachers, who were in the forest at that moment, were in disaster. They did not understand what was happening. Allah, like everyone else, was surprised by this phenomenon. She assumed it was a forest fire. She apologized to Safat for the inconvenience. 
she turned into a dragon and flew away. The half-human guards asked what was going on with Guggs, but Guggs himself didn't know what it was, so he asked him not to ask. He said that the fire could spread to the village, so they needed to evacuate, and besides, the garrison of people would not have time to arrive. One of the demihumans noticed that a dragon was flying ahead. Everyone was surprised that the dragons remained. Guggs remembered this dragon because it attacked him and Safat. He assumed that it was controlled by Safate. Meanwhile, the guy woke up, Allah wished him good morning, but he had no time for that, he did not understand why they were flying. Allah said that they had to quickly get away from the forest fire, the guy was surprised by the fire. The dragon flew some distance away. Safat could not believe that Mount Goron was on fire. He asked Allah to fly closer to the source. Some creature appeared there. Safat noticed densely growing scales on the body. The creature was crawling along the ground, wrapped in flames. It was huge, Safat suggested that it was five times larger than Allah. Allah said this. Earth Dragon, Master of Mount Goran, Salamandara. Dragon flames emanated from the creature, burning everything. Koraku asked Ella to fly faster. The girl apologized and said that for some reason she couldn't fly normally. She admitted that when Safate Salma is present, she feels that she can fly faster. Eldina became embarrassed and thought that it might be the power of love. Anya asked if it was the power of love. Koraku did not know what it was, so she asked if it was tasty. Eldina noticed something. And she asked Ella to wait because there was a small settlement next to the flame. There were still people among the houses. They shouted that they needed to run faster. Aldina told the guys that there were still people left in the settlement. Anya said that now Safate Sama is more important. Aldina wondered what Safate would do in a similar situation. She told Ella that as soon as she landed in this place, she believed that if the fire was prevented from spreading with magic, this time should be enough for the inhabitants to escape. The dragon girl understood Eldina's plan and asked her to be careful. Eldina evacuated the remaining people from the flames. Unya and the others hurried to Safada. Safat and Ala confront Salamander, the cause of the forest fire. Safat and Anya met, the girl asked if he was okay, the guy didn't understand what the guys were doing in this place. The girls were glad to see him safe. Safat asked where Eldon was, Anya said that she had gone to save lives. Anya suggested leaving quickly and immediately teaming up with Eldina. But the young master said that they would not do that, instead he asked Unya and the others to go to the village at the foot of the mountain and help with the evacuation, he wanted them to look for people who might have been late escaping in the surrounding area. But he himself wanted to try to do something with the help of magic to Salamander. Anya wanted to accompany the young master, but he said that melee attacks were too dangerous in these flames. The cat girl did not want to let him go but the guy apologized to her. And he asked Ella to go, she obeyed him. Unya was very worried and did not want to fly away. But they kept moving away from him. Safat decided that it was necessary to stop the salamander before the flames engulfed the village at the foot. He was not sure whether the initial level of magic was enough for him. He apologized to Allah, because this business is very dangerous, but asked her to help a little more, the dragon girl said that she would accompany him to the end. The guy used magic. It was water magic, he wanted the earth dragon to freeze. But he failed to freeze it, the monster became even more embittered. He started shaking his head. Safat was surprised. The monster recovered and was ready for a new attack. The guy was disappointed that it didn't work at all, Allah said that she would try it too. She began to prepare poisonous spit, and she breathed it into the monster. The guy said in surprise that the spit turned into breath, Allah also noticed this and assumed that it developed after a recent molt. In addition, she added that her power suddenly appears when Safate Sama sits down. The guy was surprised by this. Allah flew up to the monster point blank. Safat did not understand what she was doing. The dragon girl began to prepare a new poisonous breath. Meanwhile, in the vicinity of Mount Goron, in the barracks of the border garrison, the soldier noticed that it was too foggy. They broke into his room. 
Yom apologized for the intrusion, Araya said that they needed to evacuate immediately. The soldier did not understand what was happening and said that there were no senpai in the building now. The girls told him that the flames were approaching the house, but the guy said that he was told not to do anything. Gugs worried calls Meem and Araya. He asked what they were doing and ordered them to run faster because the building was no longer safe. Everyone ran out into the street. The young guard also ran after them. The building was engulfed in fire. The guy who could have stayed there if he hadn't been rescued looked with shocked eyes at the burning house. The fire did not stop. The monsters spat fiery breath. Allah and Safat tried to do something to him. The guy realized that it was useless. Neither his magic nor Allah's breath were completely ineffective. The scales of the earthly dragon were too strong, and besides, Safat's magical powers were running out. He told Allah that he wanted to try something, he asked if she could fly according to his instructions, the girl said that she could. He understood that the remaining amount of magical power could not hold out for a long time, but they had few options, either something would work out or they would be lost. Safat was ready to fight further. The young man created a wall. She fenced off the mountain from the monster and they flew towards it. Allah flew past the monster and the wall that moves behind the magician hit the earthly dragon. The monster screamed in pain, and he fell. Allah turned around. The villagers who were able to escape and were already standing on the rock watched the battle. Guggs was surprised that the pillar of fire had disappeared. Meanwhile, Safat ran out of mana. Allah was worried about the guy. He said that he was fine, his body just didn't want to move, he fell asleep. The girl said that she would go down to a safe place. However, the monster began to move. He screamed. The monster was ready to fight again. Safat couldn't believe that they only stopped him for a moment. He couldn't believe that the scales weren't damaged at all. He realized that as long as there was scaly cover, no attack would succeed. The earth dragon jumped into the air. He prepared to release the flame. The villagers realized that this was the end that this is the end for the village at the foot of Mount Goron. The residents were saddened. They were all depressed. Meme and Araya also cried. The guard who was supposed to guard the village felt somehow uncomfortable. He wondered if Senpai would return soon. Gugs did not understand where they would live now. And at that time, the mercenary was thinking about whether he would be able to return to the capital if this settlement no longer existed. He remembered the guards sitting around drinking and wondering if they had not been assigned to a place like this, they would have been a better night. The half-humans looked at the mercenaries with disgust and with hatred. The guardians never worked for them. The guy decided that there was no one from the human race going out of their way for the sake of demi-humans. Safat, meanwhile, wanted to overcome his fatigue. Allah asked him not to act so recklessly. The guy understood that if he gave up, the village at the foot would disappear, but she was so kind. Allah said that he had no magical power and could die. Suddenly, someone grabs the guy's head. He was told that he had done everything he could. The guy realized that it was Foldent. Someone called him from the ground. The guy saw that it was Elden. She used healing magic. Safat began to gain strength. He looked at his hands. The guy was glad that his strength had returned. He was grateful to Eldina. Allah asked what he was going to do now. Safat said that he had just come up with a plan that would work. They flew towards the dragon. He was also ready. The guy realized that he needed to aim for the stomach without cover. He asked Allah to fly higher. The guy then used wall creation. She planted the monster. And his stomach was open. He turned over in flight and fell on his back. The guy was surprised by this. The monster waved its paws. He tried to roll over. Foldent and Eldina looked on. The goddess said that Era is still a child and cannot turn back. The residents watching the battle rejoiced. The salamander incident was dealt with on the spot after nearly becoming a disaster. The hellfire stopped working. Safat and Allah landed, and Eldina was already running towards the young man they were able to make sure of each other's safety. And this time he decided to end the diary at this place. 
Foldent told Sarah to wake up, because lying with her stomach open is not decent. The monster opened his eyes. Safat and Eldina were shocked. The action took place in the forest. Someone was running after the mercenaries. Safat stopped the salamander while in the forest. The guards ran away from the monster. She was fast like a cat. This maid was stunning. Anyat said that one of the poachers was running towards Korok. The girl was not at a loss and was able to scare the man. All three poachers were captured. Anya assumed that the flame had already been extinguished. She was more interested in whether she was okay or Mr. Korsumpe. Foldent landed and said that after a long existence. Today she saw two rare things. Safat and Eldina listened to her. The goddess said that the large lizard was running fast, out of control, and showing a sloppy belly, the large lizard had lost consciousness. The monster remembered the voice of the guardian brother. He said that he was so ashamed that he wanted to fall into the ground. Eldina and Safat were surprised. He didn't remember how long he had been rampaging. Foldent said that the village at the base was almost fine, and it seemed that the ditch the boys had created when creating the wall had accidentally prevented the fire from spreading. But the surrounding area still turned into a huge scorched field. The monster said that he was ashamed of this and asked if all the residents were okay. Suddenly, he saw Safat and Eldina. He considered them to be residents of the village at the foot. He apologized to them for what he had done. The monster wanted to apologize properly, he asked the keeper if she could turn him over, the girl asked if he really thought she could do it. Foldent said that the monster has become even bigger than it was when they met in the past. She asked why not take on a human form and called her stupid, Safat thought that this monster was a dragon man. But the dragon girl wanted to say something about her human form. She said that she forgot how to transform into a human form. She apologized and asked to give her some time to remember. Aldina whispered to Safat that the dragon girl seemed good. The guy agreed with this. Suddenly someone called Safat. It was Anya. He asked what kind of people she brought. The girl said they were probably the source of the disturbance. They were caught running around in the middle of the fire. Foldent said the group was poaching in the area. Safat noticed that they were unconscious, so they could take them to the village at the foot. For now, Eldina agreed with this. Safat asked Foldent if they could leave the salamander for her. The keeper said that she did not mind. The salamander apologized for the disturbance. The restoration of the village began. Everyone worked to restore the village. The guys saw Safat. He walked with the girls. He asked what the damage situation was in the village, Guggs said that all the residents were fine. He added that some of the houses caught fire, but were already extinguished, and most of the victims simply skinned their knees when they fell, Safat was glad that there were no losses. He whispered to Safat that the dragons were probably girls, and he thanked the guy for saving the village. Guggs also drew attention to the associated poachers. A guy who was also a knight, but remained in the city, ran up to them because he recognized his senpai. Guggs said it looks like he's new to the border garrison. Safat realized that these were soldiers of the garrison. Araya said that she would contact the central border management department in the meantime. The residents looked at the knights. They understand that they will simply send similar types again. They were wondering why not send them back. Someone even suggested locking them up in prison in the village, but Safat appealed to everyone. The keeper said it's not easy. She suggested making the village official. The salamander had already turned into a human species, her name was Sarah. The residents were surprised at her name and what she looked like. They were told that her name was Sarah because she was a salamander. Everyone was afraid of Sarah, and she looked at the residents. Bowed and apologized, she said that, having unwittingly lost herself, she caused trouble because of the poachers who touched, which caused anger. She wanted to atone for those who risked their lives. She turned and addressed Safat. The girl thanked him for stopping him. The guy noticed that she was bigger than him. Sarah said that it has been several hundred years since she saw the dragon rider, and the flying dragon girls have a good master, Safat said that he is not their master. 
she knelt down and said that he was able to stop her, and until she returns this good deed, she also wants to be in service near Safed Dano. She swore that she would never turn into a dragon without his permission. The villagers were surprised that Safat was flying on a dragon, everyone was talking to each other, because Safat again did everything he could for the sake of their village. The knight looked at the guy. He couldn't believe that the man was fighting for the sake of demihumans. Safat whispered to Sarah that the identities of the dragons were a secret. The girl understood this and said that she would be careful, and the guy wanted to add about service. But he didn't have time, because the people began to shout joyfully, they thanked Safat for being able to save their village again. The people shouted joyfully and thanked the guy, he was shocked. Foldent said that the local demihumans respect him. She realized that this was an opportune moment. Before disappearing, she said that he would become the lord here, if the lord was from the frame of people, they could become an official village. All the residents agreed for the guy to become their lord. Everyone was delighted because the decision was made unanimously. But Safat was very confused. He denied it as best he could, saying that someone like him would not be able to govern. Gugs came up from behind and advised me to agree. After all, then they will be able to organize a security group and simply send the knights to the central department for managing border areas Araya and Smee also asked him to become a lord. The guy couldn't believe that everyone wanted him to become a lord. Gug said that then they would immediately deliver the knights to the border department as criminal poachers. One of those caught asks if Gugs is making fun of him. They looked at the residents angrily. The captain of the soldiers said that false accusations should not be attributed to them. They said they were simply carrying out their duties and asked to untie the ropes. None of the residents were going to do this, so they ordered their newcomer to do it, and he obeyed them unquestioningly. He untied them. The knight said that there is no evidence that they did anything, and the demihumans may also regret such a clash with people. Foldent asked Sarah if she remembered anything. She said that she was sleeping, so she didn't remember the faces. The knights decided to destroy the settlement. Safat asked them to wait, because what they had planned was too much. The knight was surprised that Safat was a man. He didn't understand why he was protecting half-humans. Safat said that it didn't matter whether he was human or half-human. After all, no one has the right to threaten their existence, and wrong matters need to be settled. The recruit looks at this and remembers that his dream was to become a fine knight. Meanwhile, the commander began to attack Safat. The rookie decided to testify. He said the suspects were repeating illegal hunting in the restricted area, causing great harm to the garrisons they were supposed to protect. In addition, he also admitted to remaining silent about this and assisting in the crime. The recruit said that he and the rest of the knights, with the pride of the knights, swear to the dragon rider that they will receive a fair sentence in the royal capital. Safat was surprised. Foldent said that according to legend, the dragon rider is the strongest knight, and in the tradition of knights they are considered equal to nobles. The recruit said that he might not become like Safat, but he thinks he's doing the right thing. He said that, having atoned for his crime, he would come to see the village ruled by a dragon rider. Gug said that in this case, in order for the village to become official, a lot of things need to be agreed upon. Safat could not believe that he would seriously become a lord. The people were happy. Thus began the beginning of the village of Safat. Foldent was in a new city with an old friend. Sarah recently joined Safat's family. Safat suggested that she slept for a long time in a cave at the foot of the mountain, and it seemed a little far from the bustle of life. Sarah said she wasn't worried about it. Foldent insisted that the girl put on clothes because now it was natural. Suddenly, Anya decided that it was her turn, she prepared her claws. She put Sarah's clothes on. Sarah didn't understand what it was. She got dressed and said that with less fabric, it is easier to move, and she liked the clothes that Anya made. Anya said that it was because she was the young master's excellent maid, and even if she couldn't fight at long range, she could still be useful. Koroku asked where her husband Sama was, Anya said that he had important things to do. The girl invited the girl to play with her instead. 
Among everyone, Yuni had the most excellent fighting ability. But she worries too often. She said that she was useful to the young master. But she couldn't feel it during the long-range battle in the battle the other day. Ala and Ella discussed that Unya san could cook food, prepare a change of clothes, and all this in an instant. They thought that Safate was thinking about overworking Uni. The girls decided that they also needed to try. Anya thought there was something that could please the young master even more. Guggs asked what about the party. He said if Unya is organizing an evening for Safat, then he is in business, he wanted to thank him again for saving the village. Anya thought about the party about Safat's accession to the post of Lord. She did not know whether he would like it, because he usually refuses it. Meanwhile, the guy continued to discuss with Araya and the others how to make the village official, so that incidents like the salamander mess would never happen again. Araya said that even though they were a little far away, if they could build a path between the village at the foot and Safate Salma's village, then they could register them as one village. They had a lot of problems to solve, Safad asked how the restoration work was going, he was told that Salamander had taken the initiative. She is extremely strong, so the entire protective fence against magical beasts is the same as before. Safat says that this is what he expected from an adult dragon man. Araya asked what name the village would have. Safat asked if he could decide this. Araya said that it was natural for a lord. The guy understood that in order for a settlement of demihumans to become an official village, a lord from the human race was needed. But he was still hesitant about becoming a lord. Everyone kept saying that he should accept responsibilities. The guy was going to refuse as quickly as possible, but he heard someone leaving. Yom talked to the residents who were about to leave the village. Safat realized what they were. From a small village that burned down near Mount Goran, they said that they could not stay and besides. They heard that the village would be ruled by a race of people. They were all depressed. Safat understood the situation. He realized that those who persistently put forward him as lord, Araya, Yom, Guggs and others are only those few with whom he personally had relations until this time. The young man understood that besides them, there were probably villagers who thought differently. Anya suddenly said that the residents were mistaken about the young master. Safat's friends and acquaintances were determined. Ala said that the guy saved them, Ella said that he is different from other people, and Sarah said that Safat Dono is a good person. She added that she lost her bed in the riots that took place, and Safat took care of her, supplying her well with everything she needed, despite the fact that she had destroyed earlier. Sarah looked at the people. They started discussing her, the girl said that she heard how their houses were damaged because of her, she apologized for this. And she said that she wanted to atone for her guilt, for this she decided to give the residents her claws and scales because they were bought at a high price, but the residents did not want to accept this. Then the girl decided to give her a gem from her forehead instead of claws. But the residents were uneasy, they did not want to take anything. On the contrary, they believed that Sarah was not to blame, so they said that she need not worry, and besides, she was also something of a victim. Residents believed that the race of people was to blame for everything. Thafat, considering what the human race did to the demihuman race, understood that it was natural. He was not going to be a lord, just formally, and Araya would rule everything. But that's why. He still cannot close his eyes to how the demi-humans are losing their home village. Safat approached them, apologized, and asked if they would like to use the abandoned village. The residents turned around and could not believe that he dared to come. Safat said that instead of going far from the usual place of life, there are many unused houses in the abandoned village. He also said that due to the forest road, the move could take about two days, and if the residents like it, then they can move. But the demihumans did not want to accept this. They didn't trust people, so they asked what Safat wanted in return. Residents also said that they had lost all their property, so they would not be able to pay anything. Allah and Ella said that nothing was needed in return. The demihumans were surprised that a demihuman would stand up for a human and found everything more suspicious. Anya asked if she could prescribe one blow. 
Allah said that Safet Sama is their special person, and there is nothing strange about it. Koraku said that she loves her husband Sama very much, so she will marry him. Anya said that she was the maid and at the same time the young master's mistress. The residents guessed something. They assumed and asked if all the girls were his mistresses. Anya was shocked, because the situation only worsened, Safat began to deny and say that they did not have a similar relationship, it was a misunderstanding. A man from the people said that they say that in the royal capital, there is a magic charm that subdues demi-humans. Guggs asked the half-humans to wait a minute, because Safat does not use such magic. Before he could finish the last sentence, the people said that he was able to turn even a man into a lover Guggs was dumbfounded by this. But Eldina came and asked what the noise was. The demihuman people were surprised at her appearance. They couldn't believe it was her. The people asked her to wake up from Safate's magic. They did not want to believe that even Eldin, who saved them from the fire, was a man's lover. Suddenly, Uni had an idea. She said that Aldina is not a mistress. She is Safate's legal wife. The people were surprised by this turn of events as well as by the fact that the man took an elf as his wife. Safat blushed and began to deny, but Anya asked him to be quieter. The half-humans immediately began to apologize to the guy because the marriage of people with the race of half-humans is impossible without love. Anya said that they understand everything correctly. The people understand that if Safat becomes a lord, then Eldina will be his deputy. And if she serves as deputy lord, they will happily help their savior develop the rural community with all its might. Guggs began to laugh at the situation because he knew the truth and Safat was confused because they are not even dating. Guggs told Safat that they would make him a lord, and then the royal capital would not be able to interfere in their lives, and they could create an official village for demihumans that everyone could agree to. Anya said that they would soon have a magnificent wedding ceremony, she was happy about the party. Guggs laughed, saying that Safat became a family man in no time, thus Safat's wedding was decided in the form of a push from an enthusiastic uni. The young man was glad that he was marrying Eldon, but he was interested in what Eldon thought about this. The girl at that time understood that she would not be able to ask something. The feelings of the two were hidden behind the fortress moat. Preparations for the wedding are in full swing. With the support of everyone, after much deliberation, Safat eventually accepted the offer. Regarding the Lord, he said that if he suits the people, he will do everything possible. In an abandoned settlement, the restoration has begun. The buildings began to acquire new owners. They were settling in. They also worked in the forest. Trees were cut down. The road was being paved. Onya taught me how to cook. Aldina and the rest of the elves learned magic. The children were having fun. The settlement came to life. Kiro returned and did not recognize the abandoned village. Messengers flew over him, carrying documents from a settlement at the foot of the mountain. Kiro came to Safat. He brought money for the dragon scales. The orc was glad that Safat became a lord. Safat said that he was ready for cries of protest in the village at the foot. Kiro asked if there were really no such people. Without even talking, an unexpected character was conveyed. The young man said that he was new to management, so he did not understand what he had learned at all. He read about suburban city political science, business management, and many other things. Kuro said they would figure it out somehow. He told the guy if there was any problem, he could rely on him. After all, he will always be on his side. Safat thanked Kuro for this. But the only thing that bothered them was the Garrido family. This was the family that disowned Safat. The guy thought that Gapori would not worry much about him because from the very beginning his father was only concerned about money and power. In addition, he added that nothing had happened in the last six months, so Safat assumed that Kapori thought that since the guy could not enter the cities, it meant that he died somewhere on the high road. Safat said that just in case, he registered on the papers under the false name Ghostji, and at the ceremony site they would use change magic so that he would not be recognized. He was sure that everything would be fine. Kiro asked him to be careful. The orc left. 
Safat remembers his ex-father. The guy repeatedly objected to him, but his father never listened. The young man did not want to burden everyone like his former father, so he decided to keep taxes as low as possible. Suddenly Foldent appeared. She apologized for the disturbance. Safat did not expect to see her. The girl said that she had good news, they recognized the merit of settling the salamander's unrest and decided to assign the title to the boy. Safat asked if he was given this title, the keeper told the Viscount to rejoice. The guy asked why this happened. Folden said that she had connections in the central border department. The young man could not believe that he was now a Viscount. The keeper said he looked depressed again. But Safat denied this, saying that this was necessary to approve the rights of self-government. He thanked Foldent for the information. The girl said that his emotions were written all over his face. She asked him to tell his older sister, that is, her what was bothering him. Safat said that this worries him. Will he become the same as Gapori? He wondered if Gapori's father had always been like this. But on reflection, he remembered that he began to change when he was appointed fourth duke, he became obsessed with power. Safat said that he also cannot guarantee that he will not become the same, Folden said, despite the fact that they are a parent and a child, the boy has a different personality. The guy thanked him for these words, but decided to think again. He asked if someone like him, an ordinary guy, could become a good ruler. Foldent said that he was not so ordinary, and the dragon rider, Safat, said that Allah did everything, and he could not have done anything alone. But Foldent said that only the rider can show the true power of a dragon. In addition, she added that creating a wall has a high level of difficulty among the magic of the wizarding world. She was surprised that the guy, after looking at it for the first time, was able to expand the wall on a huge scale. The keeper was sure that he was well compatible with the magic of the wizarding world. Foldent said that the boy already has two talents, he can be proud of that. Safat wondered if this was so. The girl asked if he didn't have a more important event to experience. The guy thought about it. Someone knocked on the door and called Safat. Eldina said that an urgent document had been delivered from the royal capital. Safat did not expect to see the girl. He was confused, he couldn't even say thank you. Aldina and Safat were confused when they saw each other. Foldent said the behavior was strange, and she couldn't believe what the guy hadn't done yet. A proposal, but that's exactly what it was. Anya forcibly decided for the guys about their wedding, and due to his busy schedule, Safat still did not speak properly with Aldina. The keeper noticed that preparations were progressing steadily. Meanwhile, Anya worked in the kitchen and prepared food, she did her best for the owner. They were making a cake. It was intended for a wedding. Foldent said they need to act and do everything right, because usually such events are once in a lifetime. Safat wanted to say that someone like him is not suitable for Eldina. You could tell they weren't even close. The Guardian is already tired of him, like me. She said that it was pathetic, the young man agreed with this. He said that he was thinking of asking for an engagement just for show, because just because he had an elf wife, some approved of him becoming a lord, he wanted to ask Eldina to play the role of a wife, but also said that he could not tie the future with Eldina. Safat told Foldent that Eldina originally said that she followed him for the sake of studying wizard magic, and someday she was going to return to the magic academy. Foldent saw how the girls could not believe that Safat still believed in this excuse. The young man also said that the worst could happen, and he would be found by the Garrido family, and he would probably be expelled from the country. He thought that he would be happy if he could marry Eldon. But he saw another problem, that he could not live as a person with a long-lived girl. Foldent couldn't believe that the guy had already told everyone about his situation with the Garrido family. Safat said that he only told those at the village control center about this. The keeper says that despite this he has been in this place for a long time. And Eldina is the same, and her future is up to her to choose. The keeper says that feelings are important, and all a guy needs is to say what he wants to do, Safat thought about these words. 
Foldent said there was nothing to be done about worrying about the future, and maybe they would have a child who would become the meaning of Eldina's life. Safat became embarrassed. He recalled that Eldina, from their first meeting, was always beautiful, smart, and special. The young man suddenly jumped up from his chair and thanked Foldent. He put on his cloak Koraku, who was sleeping in his office, woke up. She didn't know where her husband was going. The girl jumped on Safat and said that she would go with him. The guy was surprised when he saw the girl. He asked her to stay in the office. He explained this by saying that he wanted to talk with Eldina about something important. Suddenly, he remembered that he had to tell Korok. When they were walking down the street, the guy asked a passerby if she knew about the girl's parents. The girl says that near the settlement there actually lived a family of black bears, but not so long ago. They met with poachers. The guy remained silent about this. Koroku agreed to wait a little longer. She asked to return quickly. Safat also wanted to talk with Eldina about the future of Koroku. He had to say. Eldina was just sitting on the street. Safat had to talk about his feelings. He called the girl. The guy was no longer going to run from his feelings. It's time to share your thoughts. Eldina was surprised to see the guy. Safat asked if they could talk about something. The girl became embarrassed. The young man asked her. Listen, the girl was surprised. He was trying to say something. The girl listened carefully. The guy couldn't say. So he changed the subject and said that he wanted to talk about Koraku. He said he asked residents of communities who had lost their homes about Koroku, but this was not what Eldina expected. But she still said that she was sorry to hear that her parents were not found. But Koroku understood this, so now they can live together, Safat agreed with this and said that he believes that Koroku needs parents. Then Eldina suggested that Safat would play the role of the father and she would play the role of the mother. Safat said that she would not have the role of a mother, the girl wondered if something was wrong. She thought about it, and indeed Koraku spends more time with Anya, then she suggested becoming an aunt. Suddenly, Safat collected his thoughts and said that he wanted the girl to become his wife. Eldina was shocked. She thought about it. Safat said if she doesn't want to, she doesn't have to agree. But Eldina said she didn't want to. Safat said that they would adopt Koraku, and if they could all become a family together, that would be great. Eldin began to cry. Safat didn't understand why. She cried. The guy apologized for saying this so suddenly, but he always wanted to marry her, not because they were forced. He also said that it was not polite in such a form. Eldina said that she was happy. She asked him to take care of her. The girl admitted that she also always thought only about Safat. The guy was surprised by this. At this time, the girls were all looking at Safat and Eldina. Anya said that at this moment you need to kiss. Koroku asked what this means. Allah said if they make noise, they will be noticed. But this did not help because Safat and Eldina saw them. They became embarrassed and asked how they could spy. Anya said that everything was fine, they just made sure that the wedding would go well. Koroku was surprised that Safat would marry Eldin. She burst into tears and said that it was not fair because she also wanted to marry Safate. Aldina turned to the girl. She said they had an important conversation. Safat asked if the girl would mind if he and Aldina became Koraku's father and mother. Koraku looked at them. She asked again what they said. She couldn't believe that even after the wedding they would always be together. Safat said that it will be so because they will become a family. The girl asked if they would always, always be together. Safat said that they would always be together. They held hands. The girl was happy. This is how Koroku became the adopted child of Safat and Eldina. Allah and Ella stood and remembered how Safat helped them when they were alone, how Safat said that they were family. Allah couldn't believe that he was now marrying Eldin. Ella thought it would be nice if Allah was the partner then she too would be able to be together with Safada Sama forever. Allah looked to the side. She remembered the rings, how they were given them. She wanted to tell Safat, but they began to fidget. But they still decided and Allah said that Safat's wife is Eldina, so they can no longer wear rings on their fingers. 
She asked to be happy. Safat said that they can always be together. And everything will be as before because they are family. Allah couldn't believe it. Ella was happy. All the people gathered at the church. The bells rang. All the people gathered for the ceremony. Gugs, Yom, Araya congratulated Safat and wished him to be happy. Sarah said that a wedding is a great event. Anya was glad that they were able to celebrate this day safely. They were glad that this day had come. Allah and Ella congratulated. Foldent watched this happen. Eldina became Safat's wife. Their wedding was combined with gratitude for the salamander's unrest, which became a large party for the entire village. Eldina got drunk quickly and went to bed first, but her various preparations were difficult. The whole day was like a dream. Onja called Safat. She couldn't believe that the main guest was sobering up on the street. Onja asked to dance with her. Safat understood that he really had to thank Onya. They began to dance. They held hands. The guys were happy. But the music ended. The party is over. Anya said that now they need to start cleaning. Safat said that they can do it tomorrow and asked Unya not to force herself. Unya said that she was the young master's personal maid and mistress. Therefore, you need to try. Safat noticed that she was saying that again. The girl turned to Safat and kissed him. She asked him to be happy. And now she decided to get to work. Safat thought that now she could not resist Yuna. The girl left. So, the party is over, and from tomorrow they will be busy again every day for the development of the village. Safat decided that he needed to try his best. The office of the Society of the Trading Quarter of the Village at the foot of the mountain has been changed to the village office. Safat became a Lord Viscount Ghoshchi, he said he wanted to keep taxes as low as possible. Guggs became the head of the security group, he objected, even though the guy says so, the security group will cost a lot, because initially everyone is farmers and traders, so you need to purchase equipment from scratch. Araya became the treasurer of the village government, she said when they become a village, they also need to pay taxes to the royal capital, they won't be able to just buy and sell crops like populated areas do. Anya asked about the young master's medicine. Safat told Yuna that the demand for medicine is limited, and he does not think that their production volume will be able to cover the running costs of the entire village. Aldina became the Lord's deputy. She asked why they should not now make the hot spring as a tourist place, because hot springs that demi-humans can enter are rare, and perhaps people will come to them from far away. In his diary, Safat wrote that he was now a Viscount who had become a lord, and was trying to attract people to the stronghold, and even if the Garrido family discovered, he would not be able to intervene so easily, the young man thought that Eldina's proposal made sense and said that they would need a lot time to get on the right track. Safat also wrote that the biggest problem in managing the territory is what to do with public enterprises. At the meeting he said that it would be preferable to sell a local product. He is not sure whether this will be enough to cover the expenses of the village. Kiro recalled how he was previously told that dragon scales appeared on a layer of earth, the orc became a contract seller. Safat remembered this, but Allah and Ella dripped the scales. The guy tried to tell it, but the identities of Allah and Ella had to be hidden. Sarah asked if they needed the shed scales. The guys came to the former abode of the earth dragon at the foot of the mountain. Foldent shouted that she had found the scales, but they were buried very deep. Safat asked if there were many there. The keeper said that a lot is not the right word. She asked Sarah how long she had been underground. The salamander said centuries. Foldent said that in any case, this would be enough to dig for two or three decades. The guys were stunned by so many. Safat remembered that old scales are perceived as old underwear. Sarah didn't care. The guys decided to start work immediately. Kuro was glad that they had found a huge gold mine. Therefore, he asked for the sale. But he warned that one should try to hide the existence of this source of gold from outsiders. Otherwise, bad people will come and take it away. Guggs happily said that he would take care of the greedy people, but Anja said that she couldn't. Sarah asked that the excavation work be provided to her. She used some kind of summoning magic. 
skeletons began to crawl out of the ground. The girl said that there could be about a thousand skeletons. The skeletons have already decided to attack. But Sarah snapped her fingers, and the skeletons began to obey her. They started work. Someone was digging, someone was carrying the spoils. The skeletons worked non-stop. Aldina asked what they would do with the excavated soil and stones. Sarah suggested something. The skeletons began to make cement. Construction of a new building has begun. Sarah said it will become home to an increased number of residents. The building was ready. This is a weakness to sunlight. Aldina asked if the remains of the skeletons were formed into a magic stone. She asked to give it to her. Safat noticed how the girl perked up. Sarah said that this way there was no need to cause casualties to the Lord's guards. Foldent noted that this was unexpectedly smart. Kiro said that this is a good idea, because when you think about selling a product, it is better to process it before selling it, especially if there are smart gnomes. Safat thought about them. They had gnomes in the village. When the scales were brought to them, they were surprised by it. The gnome said that he had never touched such equipment, but would try to process it. Guggs realized that this means that their security group will be strengthened with equipment made from dragon scales, and they will become the strongest security group. The guy glowed with this, Anya said on the side. Although the equipment is good, the squad leader is too weak. Thus, work went on in the mine. Eldina was working on magic stones. Dwarves processed dragon scales. A few days later, the security equipment was ready. Thus, the direction of the village's public enterprises was determined. The dwarf asked whether the equipment was well made. Safat said that it was impossible to even think that it was made for the first time. The dwarf asked if he could call an old friend. If he could deal with the dragon scales, he would gladly move in. Soon Mr. Dwarf introduced the resettled group. After training with Anya, the security group became more reliable. People began to gather everywhere, they came because they heard that demi-humans were not discriminated against in the village. And also because there were hot springs. The hot spring business was booming. Safat understood that if public enterprises failed, he was going to ask all residents for an increase in the minimum required tax. But this is no longer necessary because there was profit from everything. Araya asked the Lord if he could spare some time. She said that in fact, there is a race of people who want to move. Guggs said they wouldn't allow it. It sounded good. Safat remembered Guggs words when he said that they would make the guy a lord, and then the royal capital would not be able to interfere in their lives, they would be able to create an official village for demihumans that everyone could agree with. Unexpectedly, Safat said that they would accept people. Anya said that problems would arise between half-humans and people, Safat said with a smile, if this happens, they will simply drive the people away. He said that he wanted everyone to listen to him, he didn't want this village to be like the royal capital where anyone was discriminated against. Everyone was surprised by this and listened attentively to Safat. The guy suggested we stop discriminating against people. He added that he is also a human being. Foldent smiled. She said that the village was getting bigger, so the guy should show up at least once at the central office of the border areas of the royal capital. Foldent asked not to be afraid, because the current director is an elf, her friend, so everything will be fine. Kiro said that he also wants to introduce Safat to someone when he arrives in the capital. And now Safat returns to the royal capital after a year and a half. Together with friends you can rely on. The finale of the life of border development. The children studied. Safat and Ildina looked at Kuroka. The girl was glad to see her parents. Safat said that it looks like the girl is studying hard. Koroku said that she will be useful to dad. Eldina thanked Yom for teaching. The parents needed to talk to Koroku. Safat asked if the girl could look after the house like a good girl. Koroku began to cry. She said that she would miss her, but she would be patient. After Safat and Eldina became parents, Koroku grew up a little. Onya said that her face was familiar to the Garrido family, so she could not accompany her. Safat said that Sarah would go with them and everything would be fine. Instead of protection, Anya asked to entrust Koroku to her. 
Koroku said that Anya is creepy. Anya said that the girl had a cheeky mouth. Allah and Ella turned to Safat and Eldina. They were sisters of the Safate family. The girl said that they would take good care of Koroku, the girl whined and screamed that she would rather play with Alo and Elo than with Unya, the parents laughed. They were counting on Ala and Ella, the girls wished them to take care of themselves. The family said goodbye, and the guys set off. They will soon arrive in the capital, so Safat decided to cast magic on himself. He changed his appearance. Kuro said he would go to the market and the rest of the guys moved to the capital's central department along the border areas. They came to the head. The head said that Safat can cancel the change of appearance. She also added that, despite the fact that few people know about the magic of the magical world, the guys should not let their guard down and called Safate by his real name. The guy was surprised, and Sarah prepared to defend the guy. Foldent said that everything was fine and the elf would not tell, and the elf asked Foldent not to speak in front of people. Safat returned to his former appearance. The elf said that the population was growing significantly, but asked to be careful with the enemy, because a gathering of demi-humans could turn into an enemy, not only the Garrido family, whose interest is only luxury and profit in the royal capital, but also the Babarbama church with the principle of the supremacy of the human race. She hoped that the guy would realize this, besides, the lord's qualifications would be in doubt. Safat was puzzled. However, the elf, as one of the demihumans, supported the guy. The guys were surprised. The girl said that Safat looked bad and asked if he didn't sleep well, adding that taking care of his health was also part of the job. Eldina wanted Safat to be reprimanded more strongly. She was glad that the head of the center was good, but Safat was suddenly tired. Eldina said that before meeting with Kuro, they need to buy gifts for Korok and the others. Suddenly, someone shouted for the half-man to walk along the edge. These were the guards who humiliated the demihumans. Safat realized that this place had not changed, he had just recently been told to be careful, but he could not pass by. He covered the half-man with himself, and he told the guards to stop the outrage. The guy asked if the victims were okay. Aldina ran up to the smear and said that this form, from Garrido's house, the guardians began to become aggressive, asking who Safat was. They prepared their swords. Aldina came forward and said that he was a lord of Viscount status, so she asked him to leave. The guards looked at the girl with disgust. Safat closed it with his hand. The guard said she was an arrogant elven prostitute and probably a lover. Safat asked not to insult his wife. Sarah stepped forward and asked if she could tear the offenders to pieces. The soldiers ran away, saying that they were Gapori's personal soldiers and Safat would regret going against their house. Safat asked what he would do about his spreading notoriety. He turned and looked at the embarrassed Eldina. She was not used to being called a wife, but Safat said that it was true. Meanwhile, Kiro was already walking towards them and said that this house does not change. Orc brought Quinn from Quinn's company. Queen said that she had heard a lot from Kuro, she was pleased to meet Viscount Ghostji. The guy was surprised that she was a human because he believed that Kuro would introduce him to one of the demihumans. Orc said that Queen is one of the valuable people who does not discriminate against demihumans. Fafat and Eldina were surprised. It turned out that someone else was supposed to come with Kuro but he got lost somewhere and hasn't been seen lately. Queen asked if what was happening between Garrido's house and Safat was normal. Safat said he was sure that this would happen to this family sooner or later. Quinn understood the situation, Safat did not say his name, so he thought everything would be fine. Queen said that in any case, capital would be needed to resist the enemies, and if they could wholesale dragon equipment to them, they could expand the large sales in the market. The guy said that this is a good offer. Queen said that in this case, the negotiations can be considered completed. Fafat said that the girl could get into trouble because of this. The girl asked not to worry because to begin with, they have strong ties with the regions and there are also such people in the royal capital. And this means that it will be possible to get more profit, Safat realized that Quinn is an expert in his field. 
the young man put on his hood, and he cast a spell with his wand. He returned to his previous appearance and said that his real name was Safate. He felt that it would be rude to enter into an agreement with a fake appearance. Queen thought that Safate was from the Garrido family who died. Safat asked Queen if the clothes in the company were the best. Aldina didn't understand why he was asking this. And now the guys are already picking out a new dress. Safat dressed Aldina up. This way he wanted to thank her. The girl thanked the guy. Suddenly, the demihumans whom Safat protected turned to him. They asked for the name of the territory he governs. Safat said that this is the village of Ribadi and explained that the name means freedom and liberation.